When we're working with aerial mapping, be that by drone or any other aerial camera system, one of the first questions that people ask or think about is how high they should fly. But that's actually not the right question to ask. So the right question is all about the problem that you're trying to solve in the first place and how big of an area you need to cover and how much detail you need to see. So the higher we fly, the more area we cover, but the less detail, the lower we fly, we narrow in that area that we cover, but we get more and more detail. So how do we actually figure out how high to fly in that case? So first of all, we need to figure out how much of an area do we need to cover and what is the size of the smallest feature that we need to identify. Then we use the rule of thumb that we use a pixel size that's one tenth the size of the smallest feature we need to identify. So figure out what that feature is and then you've got your pixel size. But then how does that relate back to figuring out your flying height? Well let's look at it like this. So say we put a sensor up there, so some sort of aerial sensor, maybe it's your drone. Now every sensor has what we called an angular field of view. All right, so it's just like our eyes, it looks out at a specific angle and that is set within the camera specifications when you buy your drone or you buy your camera system. So I'm going to say that this particular field of view, the angle theta, equals 77 degrees. So that's the angle of a Mavic 2 Pro camera on, on that drone. All right, so we've got this angle and so you'll see that if you're flying quite close to the ground, so if the ground is here, and we're looking at that area, the swath is going to be this distance, okay? As we fly higher and higher and we get further and further away, this swath gets larger and larger. Nothing changes to the angle of the camera there that's set in the specifications. So here we go is our swath. Now, what we can change is the height at which we fly. All right, so let's have a look at this height here. I'm gonna call that H. All right, so we can set that. I'm gonna set my height, my flying height, at 30 meters. So H equals 30 meters. Now what you can actually see here is that I've set up a right angle triangle, all right, with the angle here being half of theta, all right? So 20, 77 on two will be this, this angle just here. I've got my flying height, and then my unknown is going to be this value here, so X. All right, and that represents half of that total swath that each individual photo is going to capture. Now the other piece of information that we need and we're given when we know the specifications of our camera is how many pixels are in the array of every single photo. So if we think about a photo, it's a raster and so it's made up of individual pixels or picture elements, right? And in this particular instance, I'm going to say that there's 4,000 pixels along the X direction and 3,000 pixels in that Y direction. All right, so that's the only other piece of information that we need to solve this equation. Now I want you to take yourself back to high school trigonometry. You probably never ever used your trig since you left high school, but here's the actual application for it and here's how we use it in aerial photography. So here we go. We are going to use this angle here and we're going to use tan, opposite on adjacent. So what we want to do is go the tan of this angle, which we know the whole angle is 77, so this part of the angle must be half of that. So let's go the tan of 77 on two. Now remember, make sure you put your brackets in there and you also want to be making sure that your calculator is calculating this in degrees and not radians. All right, so the tan of 77 on two equals the opposite, one of the variables that we don't know the answer to here, which is our x, divided by the adjacent, which is h. And I've said, let's fly at 30 meters to test this one out. So x over 30 meters there. Now, if you work this out on your calculator, you're going to get x as a value of 24 meters. All right, so what does that mean? Well, that's half the footprint that we have here. So our total swath equals two times X, right? So double it. So it's about 48 meters in terms of that footprint wide. 
Okay, now if I go back to my original question is what is that pixel size? Well, I know that I've got 4,000 pixels all the way across here. And I know that all the way across here is 48 meters. So one individual pixel then is going to be 48 meters divided by 4,000, right? So then if we calculate this out, we get our pixel size to be about 1.2 centimeters. So if you need more detail than that, you're gonna fly your drone lower to the ground. If you don't need quite so much detail, you can fly it up a little bit higher. So there you go, there's high school trigonometry actually applied in real life.